I believe we are ready to roll uh, a little bit late out of the gate today. Back to the coding stream. And let's see what we can make happen. Firstly, I'm going to do my usual thing of make this so that I can handle it. I'll explain that what that means in a moment. I like to make that go to where it's showing the screen so that I don't have moving stuff on the screen distracting me. Hey, Aaron. And uh, next, chat window. There you are. I'm doing pretty good. It's uh, busy days uh, these days. As you see, I'm doing the um, update for more BiQuad stuff. In terms of why low pass is going to be my next experiment along those lines, I've got something I'm going to try. And we'll see how that works. I've also got various secret projects, and I think I'm going to be coding on those all day. But I'm not the only one in that boat. Uh, Again, before breakfast. I don't know why it's always before breakfast, but us open source guys are like, rise with the dawn and begin coding new things before even like making coffee. Although me, I always make coffee first and then breakfast sits around until like noon because I get distracted. This time, however, I made breakfast. And the thing I got caught up with was I had a feature re request for bespoke that had to do with, I wanted to make uh, the event sequencers have pages so that you could do um, more complicated arrangements. And uh, Ryan, uh, who does Bespoke, had an alternate suggestion, which was use multiple event sequencers that can be just sort of normal. And a thing called a radio sequencer which is like radio buns, buttons in a list. What that means is selecting between things. And it's set up in such a way where one of those can fire events to a lot of different things. So there's nothing really stopping you from taking the thing and feeding a whole pile of event sequencers that just kind of run in parallel. And then those uh, can have like the individual core progressions and stuff that you might want to do. I'll do a live stream where I explain this. Uh, this isn't a music stream, so it's not really going to be about that. And end result is what he suggested worked just fine, except there was a thing that I couldn't do. And so I basically had a feature request and he was like, oh yeah, the radio sequencer uh, isn't quite up to speed on a couple of things. So I was wondering whether I should revisit it. I'm like, mm, okay, yeah, please revisit it. I have some ideas. And I was like, I'm a dangerous man to say things like that too, because I'll pitch a bunch of ideas and they'll all be good. Seems like that is the case. So he kind of dropped out of sight. He think he's probably coding it. And maybe by the end of the music, the, uh, the coding stream I'm doing, I'll come back and he'll have that already like done or something. I don't know, but it's stranger things have happened. And the interesting thing is that even without the bug fix that I'm looking for, for doing stuff a little bit more fancy, there, there's some really wild um, things that we can do if he does this bug fix. Like if he does this thing where you can update this stuff properly, we'll be able to do things like switching back and forth between different chord sequences and things and telling the event sequencer to have an event to like skip ahead. There'll be a, a reset event that will start you at the beginning again, but instead of starting the radio sequencer at the beginning, you'll be able to have that, because currently what it's doing is rather than resetting the radio sequencer, it's just getting it stuck on whatever one it's on. So if you set this reset thing, it'll step through the various 
changes that you have in mind. And those can be like odd times, you know, 4-4, four, four, and then another one could be 7-4 or 13-8 or, or whatever. That all works already. But if you throw in that um, transport reset to go like, okay, this much of the 4-4 bar, and then on this 16th note, abruptly change to something else, it won't do it. Instead, it will reset some of the things, but the radio sequencer part will get stuck on whatever it was that it had been doing instead of going back to the beginning again. And in a way, that's like the worst possible behavior, which is why it's a bug. But it also gives rise to possibilities because you don't necessarily have to have it reset to just the, uh, the beginning thing again. What it could also do is uh, step forwards or select randomly, a variety of things like that, meaning that if he implements this thing I was suggesting, we could do a thing in Bespoke where you're playing these sequences through, but like on the last 30-second note of every bar, it can bang into the next sequence abruptly. And so we can have a rushing the beat thing going on where it's a seemingly normal track, except for that at key moments of excitement, uh, the band or the synthesizers or whatever you choose to call it, and they, they jump ahead, um, which is something that bands do. I was recently listening to a bunch of React videos on the... Don't mind me, I'm fooling with my controls. On the band Ram Jam, which is actually a band uh, star maker or something. And their song Black Betty, which is a cheesy song, but kind of amazing in its way. And one of the things that they do is they've got a bridge where it's a very simple beat. Like, doom, 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 doom. And the, the singer is belting out, wow, back Betty, ram a lamb, wow, back Betty. And there's this drum sting that comes in. It goes like, Koom, with the uh, snare and the guitars and everything. It's just a wall. It's, it's savage. And every time it does that, I'm convinced it's hitting a little bit early, and then the rest of the track is following. So the way they're getting all that energy into the track where people lose their minds over this track is it's a time dislocation that's built into the jam because their sense of time is, th this band's sense of time is kind of sketchy. They're, they're very adept musicians, but they're definitely not sticking to a metronome at all. So they're doing this hit. They're doing this like <laughs> early. And one of the things that Adam Neely has talked about in relatively recent videos and time signature stuff is that our perception of time is such that past a certain threshold, notes get too fast to register. And for one 30-second notes, by 75 beats per minute, they're already a little bit too fast to register. You can't really distinguish between that time signature. It's a little, it's going too fast. And by the time you get up to like 92 beats per minute, it's sort of way too fast to register. That means if you are hesitating or advancing stuff by a 30-second note overall and everything else is just sticking to more normal notes, you have a energy level manipulator that's not going to be heard as a time shift. The time shift is too quick. And and yeah, Lorenzo, the thing about it is um, if you uh, speed up the time, that's consistent. And Blue Baggins, yeah, if you ran a click with uh, Ram Jam Black Betty, it would be quite hilarious because it's really super all over the place. They must vary by... Um, five beats per minute at times. It's amazing. And what I'm talking about is not randomization. What I'm talking about is a way of viewing 
the structure of time and sound so that if you have like a exciting chorus bursting in and you want to emphasize that bursting in aspect, one thing to do would be the tempo equivalent. And you could also do this with tempo messages. Like in the very, the very last uh, beat of the bar, suddenly the tempo is 10 beats per minute faster than it was and then it's back again before it hits. But you've just sped that bit up. You've compressed that little bit a tiny amount and it's the same as taking the metronome like thing and taking a little snippet of audio out just before the big hit which will make it more exciting because the big hit is hitting more aggressively and then if all the other tempo stuff still stays at apparently the same tempo you don't register it as a tempo change you register it as oh that's exciting everything is suddenly more advanced and more exciting and that's the way that that works i mean led zeppelin did that on purpose with uh, stairway to heaven there's something in the records as far as what they've said about it where jimmy page was like the whole idea was to make a song that gradually increased in tempo as it went and that is pretty much exactly what i'm talking about it is a technique that totally works as far as just the building of intensity. And if you have regular tempos and you're doing this time dislocation thing, then it will also have the impression of the regularity and whatever groove you have will seem to stay locked, but you can just goose it every now and then by making these little jump aheads in multiple different ways. So let me see now. Firstly, let's bump over to the coding computer because I would like to uh, do a little experimentation. Once I'm finished with this, I'm fooling around with all of the placement of everything here. My keyboard's no longer as conveniently located, so I'm a bit up a creek at the moment. I'll figure out how to work this. Lots of things are moving around or being different. What you see here is me shifting where my mouse sits, shifting where the laptop sits. The laptop balances on this little toothbrush that I use for cleaning the record player stylus, and it needs to sit where I'm still on camera, blah, blah, blah. This is just, this is just the life of a streamer, and that's how that works. The reason I have the keyboard over there is so that I can work with it more effectively. And the reason I'm fooling with the record player again is because I have a secret project going on where I think I will be able to make the meter I needed thanks to some help from uh, Paul at the Surge Synthesizer uh, project. And that's very exciting. And I've also got a album that I'm mixing for uh, a band this month and I would like to have the meter thing worked out because that's based on my evergreens work where I can meter hit song um, sound densities and peak energy distributions and nobody else has that going on and I kind of need to have it so it's fairly trivial for me to put it together and I need this like yesterday. I need this, this meter thing immediately for two reasons. One, to do this album with so that I can have a reference point where I'm calibrating the peak energy and RMS energy relative to known hit records that I have made note of how they're supposed to work. But also because that project of playing records and analyzing them and explaining how all this works. For some time now, I have known that that was possible, that because there are React channels that play stuff all the way through and then talk about it, there are some songs and I have a big stack of vinyl records ready to uh, represent 
the songs that I would be able to put on YouTube and play so that people can hear how they're meant to really sound and talk about them. That is something that is within my capacity, but I can't just talk about them. I need to be able to meter them. The whole point is being able to supply a meter that does this stuff and works and being able to represent how that is relative to other things. And that's coming into focus. So yeah, that was my old um, 100 hits project also known as Evergreen Records Project. I literally took the 100 biggest hit records based over time by, um, it's a function of how long they've been out and how well they kept selling over the years rather than how they sold when they had just come out. So the idea is things that had a big promo push don't measure up as much. I have a list of all of those records in order and that was from a bunch of years ago. I, I started out doing stuff like that. So I need to go through those and find the ones that I can actually put on stream. And I'll make the meter, which is going to be like, I'm going to be scrambling to do that this week, I think. I'll come up with something that works. I have a precursor to it and... As far as being a released plugin, that's well in the future, unless Paul from the Surge Synthesizer Engine is able to get my thing exporting an audio unit. And even if it did, it would it would only be for modern computers. I won't be able to do a retro version of these things, but you know, you, you get what you can. Yeah, all of this is on the way. Let's open up some of this stuff and experiment with it. I said that I wanted to do Y low pass. I do want to do Y low pass. And it's going to be something like this, but more so. And warmth is going to be another thing, Lorenzo, but um, preserving dynamics, there is a lot that can, like, there is what you call heuristics around where the peak and uh, RMS energy should go. And it maps to kinds of waves, like modern music tends to have the RMS profile of like a full-scale sine wave or worse. Whereas um, if you go by triangle wave based stuff, it'll sound a little bit more open and we can measure how much of that is. And it's a kind of density meter, but remember that when you're measuring peak energy, that's not density. Peak energy is the stuff that you can't hear, but it still needs, it needs to be distributed just right, even though you can't hear it. If the peak energy, which you can't hear directly, is distributed exactly right, that's your hit record signature right there. Like to have that constantly happening, have stuff going on, where even though you don't hear it, it is occupying a full balanced range of um, outcomes. I'm working on it. Let's do this now. That is, that is a whole other thing that's going to be a really challenging thing, but uh, I'm committed to it. So first things first, let's get some of this going. And open recent project. I believe this is going to be the, yeah, this is not the signed. This is the unsigned. This is the one I need. And so we've got our bide quad plus, and that's, this is what we're drawing from to do this Y low pass, because it's going to be another smoothed one. We're building that in. And I've been telling people I was going to do the Z plugins version two, but I'm looking into doing this Y plugin first, because there's a separate thing that I need to try. I made a change between BiQuad and BiQuad Plus, and I'm observing what that change means functionally. BiQuad runs the console system inside it to expand the BiQuad algorithm. BiQuad Plus smooths, but it doesn't run the console system. And I felt like it was subtle, and if I didn't mention it, probably nobody would really notice, but I was hearing a distinction. And I thought the one with the console system 
sounded better than the newer version, which is set up to be clean and well-behaved in every way. You know, I'm not regretting the fact that that is a simplified version, because like if I was going to do a plus version with the smoothed filter, but also the console system, well, the filtering probably does um, put it this way, I can do largely what's going on in Mac EQ and the Z series filters where they have ultrasonic filtering because that's part of their output stage. But I can do it as a straight filter style filter. In other words, a filter that's supposed to be like a biquad, so you wouldn't need to worry about nonlinearity, except for that it has the console system inside it, meaning it does have nonlinearity, meaning that it needs to have ultrasonic filters also built into it. And all of this to some people is going to seem like complete madness. Like it's a bunch of unnecessary things to do. But, you know, if it works and produces sounds that are just that much better than your typical DAW type stuff, without like elaborate convolution model modeling or like nebulas, Volterra kernels or stuff like that, if doing this means that it munches more CPU, but it's a ridiculously good sound, I would call that a result, like Lorenzo says, results. So let's get into this. Let's figure out what we're doing. I got about an hour and a half and could conceivably go longer because I don't... I'm taking a moment and checking my calendar. Do I have anything? No, I don't. And there's my chair squeaking. I need to do something about this silly chair. Anywho. Where was I? Let's close this. Is our version number correct? Y-L-O-P. Yes, it is. How about our header file? Here's where we can start getting stuff more complicated. And I'm guessing that this is because this is based on the XLO pass code. I'm not necessarily going to have it be quite like this. Might be a little simpler. But here's by quad plus. And I'm going to skip up here and see that this is going to be like what it was before. And we're going to copy this and use it. There. Now we have the enum, and that specifies how the biquads work. And we can define this, and we could update all of these, or we could leave them alone or do other things with them. Um, get back to you on that one. This is going to be one of my less verbal, well, I'm talking, but it's going to be one of my less coherent streams because there's a lot of thinking going on here as far as which things need to go where and how. Do I need to do a uh, ultrasonic version of biquad filter? that doesn't have all these smoothing factors because that's going to be a preset thing. I don't need to do the smoothing factors for that. I think maybe that's a good idea. So let's start by just cloning this. We're going to make it work using what was already there. If it doesn't, I'll know something is wrong. So now we're going to make that work. Here's the CPP file, and here is the CPP file. Hey, Jazz. <laughs> 
So this is the kind of stuff we've got, and this is the kind of stuff we need to change it to be. So like that, and this code actually will directly replace this code. meaning that this can now go away. I also have a idea forming for how I'm gonna do the ultrasonic one that's very similar to all of this because the way that it works, it'll sort of automatically compensate for some of the things I mean to do. But I got this done so far. Now it's time to look at some of these things. This needs to be converted into this form. So let's find the face places that say biquad frequency. That's going to be biquad A0. I don't think I have anywhere else, so I can do a find and replace. And what I'm going to find and replace is this array element with biquad freak. So let's guess command F is going to get me that. And find and replace is going to get me that, and then, oh, is that curly brackets? Too damn small to see. I think it was curly brackets. That's not what I want. There we go. So if I replace those, that is what I want. And I can continue onwards like this. Watch this. See how that enum says bike freak, reso, and so on and so forth? That corresponds to the numbers. Yeah, I'm doing a different in param interpolation, Jess. Mine, mine's different. Since these are effectively numbers, as if it was bike freak was zero, reso equals one, a zero equals two, a one equals three, and so on, I think that's the way that, well, let me check. Oh, there's one way to find out. I'll do it and see whether it works. There is a way that I can check. So let's, uh, in this old version of macOS, you can't resize that way, so I'm not going to. Now I can see what I need to see. I don't know whether you can see it, but I can see it. And we're gonna go through one at a time. making sure not to do any dumb, silly, stupid typos. That would be a bad thing. I'd have weird bugs that I wouldn't know what to do with. Why, why, why? Why you do this thing? What is the matter from you that you do this thing? Where am I getting resonance if I'm not getting resonance here? The hell. That can't work. What the hell is going on here? Fine, I'll force it to work. Check this out. I don't see why we're not referring to resonance here. That makes no damn sense at all. But, now we have something that should make some kind of, why am I not, the hell? I'm really confused now. This makes no sense and my mouse is stuck. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Why you not have resonance? Why you not have biquad item one? 
This makes no damn sense. Oh, well that's why I've hard coded it. Let's change that. This is why. This number is coded right into there. That needs to be this instead. And here, because that's supposed to be controllable, but I just hard coded it in. That's from the X and the Z series filters, mostly the X series filter. So that explains why I was not finding any by quad one is I just straight up skipped that. We're gonna be fooling with this more going forward. This is not the way I wanted it set up. Now that stopped me completely. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Let's get back. Now two is gonna be a zero, but is it? Is that really what I want? I'll find out by looking here. Yep, uh, or no, nope, not really. But we can live with this. This is what it's actually gonna go to. We can still, we can still go with this. I'm sorry for the incoherency. I'm deeply stuck in a bunch of these things because they're all jammed up in my head at once. I'm wanting to do five things at once. Actually six, uh, somebody that might be watching would know what this thing is, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. We're gonna say, yeah, five things at once and they're coding things. By the way, I've been updating my lighting and stuff as well, and I have uh, major things in mind for stuff I want to do with that. So it's just all of the everything. It is time to do all of the everything all at once. And our next thing is what would be thing number two? By quad A0. What would be thing number three? By quad A1. I have to get these right to have any chance of it working. Four. A2. Five. It's not A anything, it is B1. This could all be wrong, I'll find out soon enough. Six would be B2. Oh, I'm worried about how this is. I'm worried about how this is. I'm going to get myself confused. Let me take just a minute and look this over. I can't go by this list. I may have just done, yep, yep. I just completed this stuff. This stuff is now settled. And I believe it is correct, but I'll check by referring to the other one. Low pass, is that saying the same thing, except for that I have this, and it is saying the same thing. You know something? I can adapt it. I would need to do this anyway. After doing uh, Rezo, we tuck this in here, 
and that's done that part. Now that matches, it's the same as before. And now this needs to look like what's on Biquad Plus, and we'll go from there. So rather than saying the A0, I need to punch in the capital B here too, everywhere it is needed. Let's go forth and do that. Also over here. Because this will incorporate that stuff where it's smoothing. But that does mean it's not as simple as I want it, but I'll probably still get there. If I don't, it'll crash and it won't work and I'll have to fix it. Uh, so yeah, and I like this four stage dry wet control. That's not what I really had in mind. I'm gonna leave it sitting there for the moment. I don't have to, but I am. And we're gonna look up what is in no, that's the end of this, hang on. So I'm gonna to try to make it look like this. But it doesn't. And I'm seriously not entirely happy with how this is arranged. I'm seriously not entirely happy with using the dry wet thing. That's gonna be a big pain in the butt. I don't like it, I don't like it. That's not what I wanted. Let's make it go away. Boop. And we're going to leave the rest of this stuff here. But let's make that go away. And let's make it be just one stage because the idea of this is that I will be able to um, have a single biquad filter, which I can crank the resonance up more than I would in the, the Z low pass and have it produce a cooler sound. We don't want this either. We don't want that. Actually, you know what? Let's just, at this stage, let's just take this from the other one. Let's take this out. Uh, I don't have, no, I do have a dry sample. So we'll define the dry sample. Guess what? We're just going to straight up be Biquad Plus to start with. Between input sample, uh, noise adding for not having it get stuck in C uh, floating point calculations and floating point dither, we're just going to replace literally everything. Bip. There. That means a bunch. Let's see if this builds. I know it won't because bycod wasn't declared, but a bunch of this stuff has now been flagged as not being used, and I like that. I'm going to actually steal everything. Let's just steal everything from the other. Maybe not, maybe not that. Let's steal this. We don't need type. We want these. Two, three, and four. Hmm. Gain staging? Gain staging going into the, well, it's worth a try, I suppose. Let's find out. Let's find out whether we can make it a hot rotted distorty filter. Wouldn't that be cool? A hot rotted distorty filter? Would you like that? That's something that you would enjoy is a hot rotted distorty filter. Cause I think we can probably make one. I think that's something that we could have. So there we go. We've got that. Prams one is no longer referring to anything. So that can be our hot rotted distorty filter function. Uh, do we have lots of params? Yes, we do. We've got all the params. We'll, we'll use those. And then a bunch of this stuff just stops even being a thing. All of that can just go away. Now, why is this here?
that was from something else. We don't need this any longer. But what we do need to do is by quad square bracket will always mean by quad A, which we have defined. And therefore, if this works, it'll work. So let's see if it works and then it'll work. Close this. Do we have a duplicate of the new by quad? I'm thinking maybe we do. Thinking maybe we can close this and not have to work with it any longer. Is that still open? No, it's not. Find or build. Let's see if that works. Good old alien kittens. That show, I don't know, it's maybe it's a little bit like watching some bozo clown around and not know what he's doing. This is not like the first chapter of Genesis. That was apparently a much larger creation, or so the story goes. Oh, uh, goodness. I always think it's quite hilarious, but also kind of touching how you can just flounder about and it's seemingly so impressive. So gain, that will do nothing. These are not labeled, but I think they should be something. What do we got? I think that might be dry wet. No, this is dry wet. Okay, this is doing weird things, so I want to find out what they are. Frequency should be 2. That seems normal. Reso should be 3, but it's limited to 0 to 1. So if res is nearly 0, that's very, very low reso. And what I'm looking to do is have a sharper resonant factor. So let's go back into that other one. Or let's go into another thing. Let's make it match the VST, seeing as I'm doing it that way. Um, this is going to be more of a jammy kind of filter rather than set the exact parameters. So let's look at what Biquad Plus does in the VST form. So how did I do it here? Rezo equals C times C times C times 29.99 plus 01, and then it checks to see whether it's more, which it can never possibly be. So that's like some kind of weird sanity check or something. That's, uh, I would call that a bit of an oversight. Meh, whatever. So basically, this algorithm is what we're going to want to use. Oh, what am I doing? File menu, no, stop, help. So I'm going to want to reproduce that. There's also a variety of other stuff that I've got to do today that I'm trying to not have too much in my head. Okay. So some of this is silly. Let me undo some of the silly parts. <coughs> you don't need this enclosing layer of parentheses. I don't know why I had that there. 
that's silly, we're taking it away. Because it's this, divided by get sample rate, and that should be just fine. Even that's probably more parentheses than I really need. But uh, by the same token, we don't need this level of parenthesis on this. Now it'll go up to um, a Q factor of 30. That's the kind of resonance I had in mind. Let's just check that rather than going with it. Let's see whether it worked. And let's see, resonance is three, wet is four. None of this is properly labeled. Let's do that too. Do we want filter resonance gain and dry wet? Or do we want gain filter resonance dry wet? Maybe gain would be a good thing to have um, as the first filter because it's kind of a distinguishing factor. It's kind of like that's how you make this filter do its craziness. So, and that's in the same position that it is in things like Macity and MacEQ, so I like that. Let's go and find that code in Macity or MacEQ and use it. This is not just purely laziness so much as if it has a consistent behavior in different places, that could be a good thing. So what's my gain factor in Macity? And we're looking in the VST again. When we look up that, in trim is A times 10. So that's pretty easy. I tend to think that better too many parentheses than too few. Not everybody agrees. Sometimes my glasses pinch off my nose until I get all snuffly. I love how I'm saying things like that and people are like, it's like watching God work. Get over yourselves, guys. Come on. Anyways. How, get parameter, get param two. And the great thing, and like if I could make it so that you understood all of this and started to follow it, that would be the great thing. I would consider that as like worthy of such highfalutin talk. Because the best gift of being an open source programmer is to give people stuff they can do. And then they start doing it themselves. And then they can go. And that's something that uh, like the, the folks I'm hanging out with particularly Paul of the, the Surge, has been able to give me. So sometimes we see that stuff happen. This is going to need to not be literally zero. I'll worry about that when I get to it. Or maybe I'll use this sanity check and echo that. When I say echo, what I mean is, yeah, let's just use that language and then everything has to be slightly more than this tiny amount. I do see one problem though, which is that we could pad to zero. Well, padding to zero causes us problems in other ways for some of these things. Nah, let's not worry about it right now. This is good enough. We can pad to very, very quiet, not technically zero. So now we have a gain trim. And we should have this, and what I was going to do and forgot was edit that. If this is like Macity, it needs to be 0 0.1. That's Unity. And now they're labeled, so that's going to be less confusing going forward. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope. Like, that's the hope of folks like Paul, who are seemingly always willing to talk over these things with other open source guys. And the discords are just bursting with, like, if you want to see where I'm hanging out talking with people, um, don't bother looking for an Airwindows Discord. Go and join the Surge Synthesizer or the Bespoke um, Discords. Because 
those are really positive communities and always happening, always happening. This is this is why I'm doing lots of work before breakfast these days is I bounce onto those communities because they're so nice and fun. And the next thing you know, people are talking about ideas and doing interesting things and it makes you want to do interesting things too. It, the community aspect of all of that is really interesting. But let's see. First of all, this fairly obvious, but I'll label it anyhow. And then if this works, the by quad A here will be the filter we need. It's all labeled up just as it is in uh, the new filter. This is, um, I'm skeptical of having it be inverse dry wet. I think I'd like it to be regular dry wet. Inverse dry wet was something from the, uh, er the early stages of the biquad filters. And although it's a neat idea, I keep fooling with it and I keep not having anything coherent coming out of it. Like it supposedly will do something useful, but I just don't find it. And I'm pretty good at exploring stuff and finding things. I figure if I can't find it, there's a problem. So we're going to assume that um, we can just do a straight dry wet here. That'll make it a little more approachable. There's going to be enough weirdness to it as far as how it's implemented. And We'll do the gain staging here, which is not technically going to do anything yet. And this is why we need that not to be zero. It's weird to discover that things actually sometimes run when you're dividing by zero, but it really, it, it does problems with DAWs that don't just outright crash. I had folks having stuff turning on and off in a DAW that shouldn't have had anything to do with anything. And it was because I had to divide by zero in there that I, th that I then fixed once I figured out that was what was happening. Let's see whether we've got this in functioning order. Good old alien kittens. Recent effects. Now we have things labeled a little bit more. Oh, gain is defaulting to zero. That doesn't sound like zero very much to me. Oh, I uh, know why too. Note, note the, the tick that's, that's causing an issue when I do this. When it goes to a small enough number, it does weird things. But this is a compensated gain trim, so it's not adjusting anything. But here's our low pass, and then here's our resonance. Now we add what was existing in the previous, uh, the original biquad filters that doesn't exist in the new smooth biquad filter, and which I found an issue with. And then we're going to update it with another idea. Let's go back to the AUs. I'll, I'll literally show you, I'll get this out of the biquad filter and we'll put it in and you'll see what I mean. All the same stuff.
Ta-da! It runs within console, specifically console 5. Except for that's a weird version of console 5, that's going to wave fold, which is kind of weird. So let's not have it wave fold, but first things first. I'm not even worried about that. Why is this not opening properly? Thank you. <sighs> I'm more feisty today. It's, I've, I've had a lot of stuff going on. So I'll, I'll be feisty, but I'll chill. Like, don't worry, don't worry about me. It'll be fine. So here is our console five, and it's going to wave fold because this is not clamped to the peak distortion. And now we're going to hear what that sounds like, including with the wave folding. And it is clamping on the output because otherwise it would like super break. And then it's dividing afterwards. So we're going to have a gain staging thing in here where if we have it at unity gain it's going to sound kind of like the original biquad. Let's, let's go and there. So this sounds fairly normal, right? Like I can I can make it be resonant. I can dial back the resonance. And this is kind of the tone of the original biquad filter, except for that one was not smoothed and this is. If I set it to a peak filter, it wouldn't be distorting like this. But watch this. We now have a ceiling on that. We got a gnarly effect because it's doing a wave folding rather than a straight clipping. And the thing is, I wasn't really looking to use um, the console five in here. I was looking at console six, or thinking about console six for this. And that is because, and we might want to pad down the maximum boost here. Console six is a clipping function that a fellow on gear slots came up with and, and offered to me, and it's reversible. And the, the tone of console six is more like it's grungier. I wanna hear what that sounds like, including as just a default um, effect. And so what we're gonna do is go and get the code for console six and put it into here. Because the thing is, I'm now smoothing it, but I can also apply this other effect. And it's going to be in console six channel and console six bus. So I got to look both of those up separately. Not very big code. That is the code. And you know something? We can get around using that power factor because I believe we can do this just fine without it. So let's do the encode. And I'll, I'll keep the credit. I'm not sure he actually used it, but I decided that he should have that credit, so I'm going to leave it in the code. So we do have a hard clip here. And we're gonna 
and duplicate what's in there. not making a joke. I'm going to put something in there. Such as this. There. And we also don't need to use the power function for this either. So we're going to do the same thing here. Yeah, I can, but the thing is, I don't think I'm going to be doing that this time because this, I'm after something. I'm, I'm trying to do something else. You know, this this actually might be a variation on uh, that algorithm. Speaking of which, let's go and get the other one. And there we have it. It might actually be a different way of arriving at the tube two thing because it's that's really one of the most basic things you could have. It's not the most complicated thing, but uh, it just works. So this could be just a reformulation of what already exists. I'm not worried about it. If, if it's that, then that's fine too. And boop. Oh, 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 except I feel like I think I'm going to need to use the power factor for this because I don't know how to code power of 0 0.5 as regular math. Like power of 2 is this times this, but power of 0 0.5, that's going to be more like a square root kind of thing. So we're going to leave that there. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Uh, I don't know what you mean by what was the algorithm the guy from Gearspace gave you. Oh, no, th this is, yeah, this is Tor Gristle from uh, Gearspace. And this is what it is. It is a kind of wave shaper. It might be the same thing, or bits of it might be the same thing. Like, uh, I do wonder what would happen if we did um, input sample equals... Yeah, th this is something. I'm not sure if this is the same thing. I also wonder whether there's a way of making this be different. I see something I can do that would reformulate this because it's a slightly cumbersome explanation. So let's do something out of spiral. And you should understand that when I say stuff like that, this is not like some genius work so much as, I remember there was a way that you did math here And 
and I remember I had this. And if you have this, It's a thing divided by this. And if you go this and then this, if this is true, you use this one, otherwise you use this one. So I can use that instead of this sequence of if statements. And that'll make it a slightly easier It'll make it an easier thing. So let's see what we do. First of all, we take this. Not that, this. and we make it a floating point value, although it would have worked anyway. And then what else is in here is this. So it'll either be one or it'll be this. I, I say this all the time when I go beyond words. It must be very frustrating. That's why people run screaming from my streams. Let's add more parentheses. That's the one. I think I don't need all those parentheses, so let's take it away and see if it still works, because this is a math op operation. In theory, that kind of makes sense. And that all works. We'll just tighten up that space. Let's be meanies and tighten up all the little spaces. So there's one version of all this, and then we're going to... The other version is going to be like that, but different. So. It's less than zero. We also have to check to make sure that it's less than negative one. So there we have that. And then the input sample equals negative one plus Uh, plus, plus, plus what? So in theory, that should work. And then if we add this to here, Add this to here. Then we can just move this up here because now this is the same thing. X scrolling off the screen. There we go. Console six in a tiny overly compressed line. Yay. Mm -hmm. 
that we could also duplicate here. In fact, we can duplicate it so closely that we can just copy and paste it and then edit it to match. So rather than the 1.0 minus thus and so, we have 1.0 minus this and that. Copy and 1.0 minus Thus and so. I don't know if I have the right number of parentheses here. I do. And then 1.0 plus this and that. I'm doing too many changes at once. Really kind of shouldn't be doing this, but I might get away with it. Ah, too many. So we are using the power factor here. But same formulation. And technically I could use the power factor there and then just do more stuff for... In fact, in fact, hang on a second. We might want to play with this because I have been observing things about the multiplying you know, using the power factor in these calculations. So we might have tweaks to do here that would be interesting. In particular, using the power factor instead of the, the math. The thing about the power algorithm that makes it be slower is that you can do fractional and you can do all manner of weird stuff like, you know, less than less than one power and so on. And it comes up with a sensible result because it's a complicated math function rather than just a simple multiply. That said, if you do the wrong number of power factors, you wind up with something that's strikingly asymmetrical meaning that we can make it be like 2.1 or something and have it still be mostly a saturation factor, but it starts to asymmetrically distort. And that might be interesting enough that it's worth fooling with. So what we're going to do is this. And that should actually work. It seemed to be correctly constructed. I think I can lose one layer of parens and still have this work because of the way the operators go. Just because I have this question mark trick in here doesn't mean it won't actually work that shouldn't be dependent upon being contained within parens to function at all. So ugly, messy little hack, but so for now, we've got a uh, calculation in here. We're not using the simplified easy math version. We're using the full on power version because we might have some tweaks to do in there. In particular, I'll note that if I do like, This is more for just ease of understanding.
That means now we can fiddle with this and it will adjust both sides of the calculation, pushing them slightly off of the control. So let's take that back out and put it in up here where we can play with it. Let's make it be halfway. Halfway should be symmetrical. And so moving it off will change it in various ways. And we're going to hear what that sounds like when we actually run it. And that's also fairly safe because nothing about this can divide by zero or get too out of control. So I haven't done all of those things. Oh, no. Oh, dear. What have we got wrong? Well, that's weird. Now what? Math H. It broke math. My coding breaks math. Oh, I see why. This needs to not be just pow and then this, like this paren needs to go away and be replaced elsewhere. It is in the wrong place. And that's not the case over here. So we're probably good. Let's see whether that is in fact good. Yep. Okay, that was a simple bug. That wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, and we can lose these. That's why that was different. Build again. We should be just fine. Now, oh no, one more thing. As long as we're being like all the tension being built, Oh, and better still. See, that could have some real interesting effects. We're going to see how crazy this gets. And we'll probably jump into sine waves pretty quickly, but First of all, old faithful. Duh, uh, and we want 0 0.5 for like normal C. Now what do we got? Okay, that's impressive. Didn't see that coming. I better know what's going on. I think I have these reversed. Yeah, check it out. See how there is this? If input sample is larger than, well, no, that still shouldn't be doing that. Huh. Okay, well that's, oh, 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 oh. This isn't supposed to be here. I just took this out. So that needs to be made to go away. 
I'm, I'm double processing basically. So now that I've done that, is it going to behave itself or is it going to be all crazy and broken? Because that wasn't supposed to be there. I should have taken that out. Yes. Merry Crazy Land with Chris. Still sounds terrible. Scaling it. see what that looked like. This is not going to be useful and I better not save it this way, but oh, yep, see? So some of this looks normal, but one whole side of it has gone crazy and is not working properly. So that would tell me that something is going on here. Some of these waveforms are fine and some of them are just automatically totally broken. Let's bail out of here and see what I can do to return to, I, I think I tried a little too hard here. Or indeed way too hard here. Let's actually put in the code from console six. Let's not derp around with these wild changes before testing it and seeing if it functionally runs. This is the literal code from the one. And that's the working plugin, so that should actually function. I'm going to comment that broken stuff out. So that's the one. And where's the other? any other file. And here's the other. So if I know what I'm doing and this is a working existing plugin, then doing it this way without altering that stuff should work. Because something that I did, changing it and making it fancier and more compressed gave me a problem. Let us now see what we got. Oh, no, no, that's not what I meant. Remove, please. Thank you. There, having changed it, now what have we got? Interesting that my boosts here are way louder than they have any right to be. Heavy distortion. Heavy resonance. So we have a result, although we don't have an asymmetrical, but maybe we could make one. And let's 
have a quick look at what that looked like too. Super resonance. Yeah, that's a big old peak. Yeah, that's what a, a super resonance is going to look like. Is it's going to look like just the waveform. Let's get out of here. And let's put in the thing we were going to do. Oh, 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 hang on a second. I think maybe I found the problem. Oh, no, I don't think I did. So that's what I tried to do with it. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got this backwards. Let's let's try this again. I didn't do this right. Decode goes after this. Let's see what we what it sounds like now. We'll take that explanation out. Now this should still work, I just moved it to a different place. But now it is surrounding the biquad filter, which it wasn't before. That's the thing is, what, what we just heard was cool, I guess, but it wasn't really relevant to what I meant to do. It was a simple mistake. Whereas this should be a little more relevant to what I meant to do. We're gonna go back to Alien Kittens again, just because we've been using it. And what have we here? That's a very distorted sounding filter. I think that's a pretty good sounding distortedness. filter with some real juice to it. This is probably where we're going with this. frequencies. Thank you. 
having that resonant 303 kind of thing in there is distracting because that has its own resonance going on and it makes it hard to hear what this one does. Let's go to a rock and roll kind of sound or maybe drums. all the distortion now. This is so much distortion, we're going to start to run into lots of aliasing, so it would be a good idea to start addressing that too. Uh, but we also want to test this. Remember this? We can do fractional powers because we're doing the uh, original thing. Therefore, now we add another thing. And we hear what that sounds like and probably run some test tones because it's going to get to that point where it's really got something going on. All the words go away. Brain goes away and turns into entirely a robot for figuring this stuff out. Let's see what this did. It's very distorted. Oh, isn't that isn't that interesting? How's that for a weird effect? Would you like a filter that does this sort of thing? It's making some pretty strange behaviors. Let's do some test tones. This should be symmetrical. Let's 
Let's have a quick look and see if that's true. That looks pretty true. We've got just that little hint of wiggle there, and that is the I'm trying to see if that is flat topping both of the sides of that wiggle, because that would be a very interesting result. I think maybe it is. Let's do it again. Because I don't think anything does this. What do we got? Oh, oh, yeah, see? That is not just flat topping the top edge of the wave. That's also flat topping the wiggle. That's flat topping the resonance. That's an interesting result. I don't think other filters do this. But now that we can do this, let's see what happens when we start doing weird things with asymmetry. We might be onto something here. Fully asymmetrical to the zero side. We have more of a wiggle on the top and less on the bottom, I think. It's still clipped. And then when I do it to the other extreme, it goes weirder. So let's see what happens when it goes weirder. Oh. That is quite a thing. There's something happening there. I feel like that's flat topping the extreme and letting the other stuff be more round. Don't save this. Clearly, we need to go and play. If pow factor is Pow factor can be as much as it could go in opposite directions. There could be an A and B, so I can play with it, and it could be more extreme. So when I boosted it, it got silly. That's when it was going from 1.5 to 2.5 was when it started to get silly. Let's widen the range. So now 0 0.5 is gonna be the, the basic thing. And let's do another one. And that'll be parameter six. That way we can see what happens when we do it in opposite directions. This, this stuff is crap I don't think anybody has done before because I don't remember anybody coming up with one like this. So this is gonna be the Y low pass and no mistake, we might actually be onto something novel here. And I'm gonna be looking at the way those interactions with the sine wave happen and seeing what I can make that waveform do. So our encode is going to be in power factor A, and the decode is going to be in power factor B. If they're made to match, it should still behave the way we're seeing. If they don't match, then maybe it'll do really weird things. And we're still not going to have a divide by zero build it. We're going to go back into our bases. And now let's hear what it does. Okay, so if they're both higher, 
me get this. That is a clipped on one side and round on the other. I don't know of any filter that will outright do that. So there is an, there is a side effect and no mistake. It's a weird thing for an algorithm to do, but we can do it. In fact, now that we can do it, we can also sweep it. At the high frequency, it looks like this, which is the same thing, only miniaturized. And then at the low frequencies, it gets really crazy. Strange wave shaping effect, woot. So there's a thing. This is gonna this is gonna fit in very nicely in bespoke because we're doing really strange things here. Now, what happens when we do weirder stuff? Like uh Well that's kind of nothing happening. Oh, but I wouldn't call that nothing. That's a very odd shape. That's an amusing shape of a waveform. Check this out. Turn a sign into this. I marvel. We are doing weird, stupid, and hilarious things, but they're kind of awesome in their own peculiar way. I would not have guessed I could make a wave shape like that. That's real goofy. Let's keep going. If I go all asymmetrical, what do we get? Do we, no. That is just kind of softer and strangely offset. That's towards the tail end of that wave. So this is the sweet spot as far as that behavior is concerned. What happens if we have this? Oh, that's kind of about the same though. Yeah, this is just increasing the amount this pokes in. Didn't see that coming. So if we have this flat, which is relatively normal, and we start messing with this, it's about the same though. That's not wildly different. So it kind of tracks. None of this starts doing anything super different when we change it. I'm also not seeing much in terms of asymmetry here. Like the exactly two form should be giving me a, uh, let's see if we offset both of them a little bit rather than a lot. Maybe that's a little bit asymmetrical, but I couldn't swear to it. Honestly, don't think it is. I think it's still pretty symmetrical. Oh, hello. That's different. We've got this higher form here. And then as it gets adapted into the lower sine waves, that resonant part stays, but the resonant part is like inversely clipped. So it's causing this real grind on the edge of things. Now, what do we get if we do inverse settings of one way or another? That looks very similar to what it already was. I'm honestly not seeing that much in the way of interactions with this but I might surprise myself. 
No. Everything I do to change these doesn't seem to make anything unusual happen. In particular, I'm not finding that I can make this do anything. I hear a node here where there's less happening. I think that's just it reaching a fairly clean state. What about other settings? mellow out a lot here by and it's basically just kind of squared off it's not as edgy and some of these aren't producing the effect at all Like, I'm not getting it here. Oh, if there's a noise, it does something. So the interesting thing about that was how part of the waveform did not get the overtone on it. If everything was off, like I'm setting this so that it's all kind of defaulting to one, so there's no power factor being applied at all. We get this. And that's kind of a soft clip, but it's very mellow. What happens when we boost some doing this? No saturation, it's very powerful. That feels powerfuler than it should be, is it? We've got a kind of resonance on the click there. But I think all that's happening is some of these waves are peaking higher than they would otherwise. So we'll shut that back off. If we distort a lot, we start seeing that resonance there and it's showing the same behavior throughout. It's always clip at the top of the resonance and then through to the other part, which I think is it's, there's a usefulness to that. Oh, but at the lowest frequency, we're not triggering the resonance and so it's soft clipping. That's interesting. If you are low enough in frequency, that resonance doesn't kick in and we get a simple soft clip. If we're higher in frequency, the resonance kicks in and we're starting to see it happen. Higher still, it gets a little more aggressive. And then higher than that, it seems to chill out again. So that's very interesting. In fact, the resonant peaks are going past the zero crossing point this way. And I wouldn't have called that off of just sine waves going in here. Oh, B music, this is literally what we're doing is we're giving it a sign input and looking at the waveforms. So we've got a variety of ways to interact with this now. We got a bunch of resonance, we've got the pre and post gain and asymmetrical is completely off. 
meaning that um, it's the it's an inverse something. It's got a hard clip, but if it's not doing the hard clip at either point, one point zero divided by one point zero. So it's a power of one. It's one minus one minus one, or one minus input sample. So it's basically unity gain here. In both of these cases, when we're not using this. So we can revert it to a hard clip or we can bring in the soft clip behavior. And the soft clip behavior is what starts things getting funky. So let's sneak it away from the strictly unity gain. We don't necessarily have to go all the way over towards uh, the factor of two, which is very intensely nonlinear. But we can see what we get. Well, that's kind of interesting. What do we got? We've got that uh, funny clipped resonant behavior, all right. And there's something weird about it. And then as we get higher, we're sort of getting a double-sided clipping thing going on, but the spacing of those things isn't necessarily even. Let's go play with it some more. In fact, let's assume that we want to go back and reconsider this. Making those go in opposite directions didn't give me any useful results in the sense of it didn't do anything crazy. I was expecting something crazy maybe, but nope. So we're going to drop that so that we can dial in tiny amounts of it. This could be another controller. This could be another filter parameter. Let's see what we get. I think we might be getting towards the end of my useful day on this particular one. I believe I can stretch it to multiple weeks because I do still have to put out monitoring too and I do still have to put out um, the multiband distortion that I made. That's something people could get to have and not currently possible. This now does nothing. So that's like an edge control, isn't it? Hello. What's that look like? Uh, funky is the word I would use. A lot of resonance in there. Oh yeah, that resonance bounced way back from the edge. I 
and then at lower frequencies, more of the lower frequency pokes out. I think this is a useful behavior. So what we effectively have got resonant control. I call that resonant edge. very low resonance. Oh, we got a crackly effect here. We're doing something that is so intense that the algorithm's freaking out. buzz. And remember this is smooth so something else is going on. Maybe this needs to be interpolated too. Uh, but wait, the frequency is already being interpolated so I don't know what more I could do. the full edge, there's this point where it starts to rasp. Let's see what that looks like. Yep, squarey. But what can we see, if anything, when it kicks into, I'm going to say I don't see very much. Let's make it more obvious. Uh, maybe this is what I'm, I feel like the edge of that wave is kind of curling backwards a little bit, which is not what I would necessarily expect. Undo, let's go back, let's play with it some more. There's an even more distinct edge. What's the edge look like now? Ah, starting to see, starting to see. Maybe what I'm hearing is just the tiny hint of that behavior showing up. Because this behavior is the heart of what this filter is doing. And we can make it happen only on just the very front edge. There is also a thing where as we go into this behavior, it's sharpening the entry into that clip. This is an inverse of a soft clip. And it's on the leading edge of both of the waves of the waveform. What we see here is um, well, I didn't mean to do that. That's not what I wanted at all. Come back, waveform, so I can look at you. That's what I meant to do. Look at what that's doing. It's a sine wave, right? 
So it's going into clipping, but the way this algorithm works, rather than going softly into clipping, it will steepen until it hits the wall and does a hard corner. And that corner is so hard that if we expand outwards, we see that it's hitting the Nyquist limit and oh my God, look at that. Just look at that. And it'll steepen and go faster and faster until it goes whack and hard clip here. And then Xing out of there is another like violent whack. And then on this additional part, again, it's steepening up as it goes into that clip. This is a really gnarly edge factor to put on anything. And that's happening even on the basiest of waves. We've got that entry into resonance and it does this ridiculous, ridiculous thing. It's like a shark tooth wave where it's exiting very slowly and very gently, but then it's entering with this insane ramping up into the hard clip and then exiting the hard clip also very rapidly and going back into the hard clip again very rapidly. It's like twang. And that's where we're getting that tone. That's where we're getting that sound. And it's going to do the same thing in the opposite direction for only the entry of the wave. The exit of the wave is always smooth. So we're doing a waveform thing where it's going to sharpen the input of the waves and soften the exit of the waves, which is something that's not dissimilar to what some tube things do, but in a very different way. And we've just made this be a thing. This is now a filter that can be made to, to do a thing. It's producing this multiple pings of extremely high frequency information out of the resonance, but only on the onset of the wave, never on the offset of the wave. That's very weird and interesting. And the setting that it was doing that on was asymmetrical cranked out all the way. So if I take that back down some, I'll see that it doesn't seem to be going into as much resonance it's affecting the resonance, but we still have some of that behavior. It's just able to take the sign and steepen it out, but only on the onset of the wave. We have this continuous curve, shallow to the normal slope to extremely steep and then hard clipped and then bouncing back out of that again. Super weird. And then lastly, without changing anything else, we take the asymmetrical all the way down, at which point we no longer have the behavior. Let's go all the way back to here. We've got a hint of resonance, but it's no longer steepening. Asymmetrical does this. Asymmetrical causes the onset of the waves to do that bonkers thing where it's hard clipping inside the resonance. But as we add that asymmetrical factor and take it away from being unity gain to increasingly high numbers, and when we say increasingly high numbers, that makes me wonder how much can we push this insanity? We get from a hard clip-like behavior to the steepening factor. Let's, don't save, I'm gonna use that again. Let's find out how crazy we can get. We're only dividing by one plus whatever or multiplying by one plus whatever. So are we gonna break by throwing a really, really sickly wrong number into this? We're going up to like a hundred. That's pretty extreme. Do we break the thing beyond repair or come out with some kind of really weird effect that we didn't expect? 
this is where the crazy really begins. Unless it just doesn't work. We'll see whether it just doesn't work. Drum roll, please. Asymmetrical of zero. Ow. That's harsh. Okay, it'll handle 100. What does it do? Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. This might be usable. Hello, hello, indeed. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Didn't see that coming. Look at that. We've got the note resonating until it gives out, and then there's this little tail on there, which is not the same length. And also, let's look at it bigger. So there's the Nyquist frequency. This is what the wave will normally look like, which is basically, there's these areas of flat converting into this really weird thing. Let's see what happens when we go to another place in the sample. And as we zoom in so where we can see the Nyquist frequency, we see that we have these little spikes being generated all over the frickin' place at the zero crossing and at the peak. So increasing this number insanely is causing us to hard clip at close to zero <laughs> rather than hard clipping at uh, actual clipping. And since we discovered we can do that, and we're feeding a sign into this, so this is just messy. We're gonna drop resonance. Resonance below a certain point, nothing happens. This is full resonance. we got here. Another weird clip. What do we got when we go all the way over here? As I suspected, as we increase resonance, what we're doing here is Oh, it keeps jumping to the end. I don't want it to be at the end. Come on, you. Behave. Be nice. We're making this. And that is truly weird. So, yeah. We're getting, we're getting somewhere with this. I might play with it more. But, um, yeah. We can now turn a sine wave into this. How's that grab you? That's an interesting synth filter. I'm going to call that an interesting synth filter. I'll probably bring it to the attention of uh, Surge, like Paul and the folks at Surge, because I don't know if they've seen this happen before. And I need to dial it in so that it behaves well and the ranges are useful. But yeah, as we introduce more resonance, I believe we're going to start introducing more of these spikes, and as we keep adding resonance, they keep filling out until they reach the end of the waveform. And until we get there, we're starting from zero, and 
adding this oscillation as it gradually goes up to what would be full clip if there wasn't any resonance. And the resonance is way louder than the rest of it. Oh man. And as we go to a higher frequency, we start losing uh, cycles. As we go to a lower frequency, we're basically just extending out this endpoint. So you're baking, basically making a weird constructed rate waveform. Here, let's test that assumption. So we were doing that with this, but if we did a higher frequency, One spike, two spikes, three, four, five. It's pretty crackly, but I can't imagine how it would be anything else. Let's see if that is in fact one spike. Looks like it to me. Yep, and in this case, the way it's working is it's letting it be a flat top, but it's adding that spike on the tip of it. And I think it's sort of bouncing around between a medium clipped and a full clipped thing. So yeah, we can, we can now do this. We can sweep frequency and it will reform that but can we also make it bounce between these two behaviors? I'm listening for whether some of these have Yep. So it's bouncing around between the clipped and the full scale output in a weird nonlinear way. And this is what I was expecting to see the first time that I did it. Spike on the beginning of the waveform. There's only one of them. It's at any frequency I want. And it just scales as you manipulate. So when you manipulate the frequency, you're causing this to be wider or narrower, and it can be any number of spikes that you want, but it flakes out between being this distorted and continuing onwards and going to the full distortion and then coming back out of it again. So it's kind of like the way that this enters in determines whether the the inside of the waveform is going to be thinner or fuller. That's some craziness. I think we're done for today. I don't think I can usefully take that any farther now. So we're posting other stuff, but I'm going to continue working on this because I do wonder whether I can make that like whether I can make it not sputter between the things, but um, stick with the pulsy form or stick with the square wavy form, because what's happening is that's a factor of how it interacts with that sharpness control. And that sharpness control is a beast. <laughs> it's very, it's very weird and out of control. But I mean, hey, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. That is, uh, if I can figure out a way to smooth that, I will. I'll figure something out. If I can't, we'll go with this just as it is. But for now, I'm going to call this a live stream. 
and I'll talk to you folks next week, or maybe do some streaming uh, before then if I have music stuff to do. We'll see, because I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing some mixing for somebody, so. And we'll return to exploring this probably next week, and I'll do either the multiband distortion or monitoring two as the next plug-in on Sunday. And I'll talk to you folks later. Bye-bye.